When you print off your worksheets, if you'd like something repeated at the top or bottom of every page, known as headers and footers, like the author's name, logo, date, page number, you can do it one of a couple of ways. If you're backstage, click on the File tab, let's go backstage, and down to Print, and let me go ahead and scroll down here and scroll down to the bottom. You have the Page Setup link. When you click on that, you get the Header and Footer tab. You can access it backstage here, or if you don't want to go backstage, let's go back to the front stage, you can access it on the Page Layout tab, go to the Page Setup group, and click on its expandable dialog box button. When you do that, you get the same window with the header and footer tab. Cool. Now you have the preview for the header section and the preview for the footer. To be able to customize the header section to add something to it, go ahead and click on Custom Header. Opens up and you get three sections. So at the top of every page, you can have something in the left section, top left, or top center, or top right. So at the top of every page on the left hand side, I want moi, me. And I want to be able to make my name stand out. So with the cursor flashing there, if I hold down the shift key and hit the home key, it selects everything from the end to the beginning. You'll learn that in my Microsoft Word training video and so many fun shortcuts. In any case, with it highlighted, I can come up here and hover over. Okay, it's not going to show me right here, but it will in just a minute. That when you hover over it, you should get a pop-up that says this is format text. So you know what these little buttons are about. So let me go ahead and click on it and okay opens up the window where I can go ahead and apply a different font type, a different style. Let's make me big, bold, and beautiful. And let's do size 16 and a fancy color so I can really stand out. That looks good. Click OK. Great. And then just go ahead and click OK. And there's the preview. Now let's do something for the footer. So custom footer. Let's do the bottom right of every page, so the right section. And let's see, let's hover over, okay, there you go, okay. And then it tells you in the pop-up, that's the insert date. Let's do that, click on it, inserts the code for today's date. So in other words, anytime you open up the workbook and you print it, that day is gonna insert that day's date. So let me go ahead and format it, select it. In other words, format the code, it'll format today's date. Come up here and click on format text. And let's go ahead and change the color, click on the drop down arrow and let's do Orange accent 6, darker 25%. Well, that sounds fun. Yeah, let's make it bold too. And then click OK and updates it. Fun. Let's click okie dokie and hey, there you go. Now, in addition to this, you get other options where you can have different odd and even pages, different first page. In other words, think of it like a book. On the first page, the title page, you usually don't have headers and footers. It's just blank with the title. So you can choose not to have anything there and have different odd and even pages. So like when you're reading a book, on the odd page up at the top, you may have the author's name, and on the right-hand side, maybe the name of the book. You can go ahead and check those, and you get some other options, but I wanna keep it simple. And let's take a look at this and click on Print Preview. Okay, there's my name. Okay, page one at the top of every page. Let's go down to the bottom, because at the bottom of every page, it's gotta be the date. That's page one. Does it do it on page two? There's the date, and there's my name. Cool. Now you can do it that way, or an easier way for me that I like going to when it comes to working with my headers and footers is going to the page layout view. And you can access that one of a couple of ways. Let me go ahead and hit the back arrow. And you want to go to the View tab. Go to the Workbook Views group, and you can see we're in the normal view. We can go ahead and change that to Page Layout. Click on it. And there's the page layout to work with. Well, you can see your header now. You can see the three sections. You can do it that way, or let me go back to the normal view. You can also go to the Insert tab. Go all the way over here to the text group. Click on the arrow, and there's header and footer. When you click on it there, it takes you right to the same view, but it dumps you actually right into the header section of the page layout view. So if you come up here, click on the View tab, you can't go back if you do it that way. Well, no, that's not true. Even though you can't click on the normal, once you're in the header section, it's in edit mode. If you want to be able to go back to the normal view, you got to get out of the edit mode. In other words, out of the header or footer section, and the footer section is at the bottom of this page, which we'll go over in just a minute, but let me go ahead and click out, then hey, you now have access to those different views. But when you're in it, it puts it in edit mode, you can't get out of here. So, with my cursor flashing in there, 
Let's come up to the Related Contextual Design tab for the header and footer, the tools that is. Click on it, and it's only available when you're in the header or footer section. And you see up here, I don't have to hover over it to find out in the pop-up what that is. It says the current date. And so let's see, how about in this example we insert a picture here. Does that sound fun? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Click on Picture. And you can browse on your computer, which I have one on my desktop that I want to use. Click on Browse. Oh, it's right there, computer. Let's go ahead and double click to insert the code. And you won't be able to see the picture until you actually click outside of the header. So if I click down, oh, there you go. Now it pops it in. So if I come back up here and click in the header, you can see the code. Now, let me go ahead and scroll down. And the computer baby's about yay big. The problem with this is that it's so dark that it kind of blends in with the numbers, the data here. So how about if we go ahead and bleach this, wash it out so it's faded. Let's come up here and make sure that you select the code because after you have the code selected, if you want to be able to format the picture, go ahead and click on it and allow you to do it. And you can mess with the size. So if the picture's too big, you can go ahead and let's decrease it scale-wise. Instead of 100%, let's go down to well, 85%. And because the lock aspect ratio is checked, it won't, when I do the height and I crunch that down, it won't squish them out and make them flat like a pancake. It keeps the width in proportion to the height with the lock aspect ratio. And that's there by default. In any case, I go over more of that in my Microsoft Word training videos. And before we click OK to see it, it's been shrunk, let's come up here and click on the picture tab. And the color is automatic. It's the default. Let's click on the drop down arrow and let's wash it out. When it washes out, the default for the brightness is 85% and the contrast is 15. You can go ahead and change that if you want less or more brightness and contrast. And then click okie dokie and okay, that looks a lot better. That way I can actually see the numbers and then kind of detect and see the kid punching in the numbers on the computer. Now, I don't want the picture right at the top. So let's go ahead and click in front of the code and hit enter, 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 enter to kind of push him down. And it will update when I click outside of it and it pushes it down. There you go. Okay, that's better. Now, like I said, if you want to scroll down to the bottom of that page, you have the footer section. There's the date. You got the three sections. You can go ahead and click in it and add something else. Or instead of scrolling up and down, you can come up here on the design tab in the navigation group and go ahead and jump to the header, jump to the footer, jump up, jump down, jump around, and which is a lot quicker than scrolling. And so how about if we come over here in the left section and let's do the current time. Go ahead and insert that and you can format it. I'm going to leave it as is. And when I click out, it actually puts in the current time. It updates the code, changes it to the current time. Wow, I'm working way late. If it gets to 10 o'clock, oh, I need my beauty rest. So I got to wrap this up. Now, one other thing that I think would be important is to enter in the page numbers. So well, let's do it right here in the center section. Come back up here, click on the design tab, and we've got page number. And if I just did that, the problem I run into is that if I print off five pages and I hand out two pages to whoever, if there's supposed to be more pages, they won't know unless I also add the number of pages. That when I print off should be included. So if I go page, space, and type in of, space, and then include number of pages, see if this makes sense page one of one, if I just had one page that I printed off, but if I had more, it'd be page one of two, or if they got a page and they looked down at the bottom, it said page two of 10, they could go, hey, where in the heck is page one? And then page three through 10. So that could be very helpful. Let's go ahead and click outside so we can update it. That looks good. So we get our preview right there, and then we can go ahead and click back in it to come back up here on the design tab to see what other options we got. So quickly, we've got the different first page, meaning again, as I said, when you check that, the first page is going to clear everything that you have on it because the first page, the title page, the introductory page doesn't have anything on it. So if I check that, it wipes everything clean. Now you can go ahead and type something in there if you like. It's just going to be different from the other pages. So let's go ahead and uncheck that so it can bring everything back in. And then you have different odd and even pages. So if I choose that, check it, then the odd page is going to be different from the even. So the odd keeps the headers and footers and the even clears it out. So I'd have to type in something different on the even page, page two. And if I had 10 pages, it would take what was on page two, the first even page, and update all the other even pages, page four, six, eight, ten. 10. So let's go ahead and uncheck that. 
Okay, now to go ahead and get out of here, we want to go back to the normal view. Come up here, click on the View tab, and we're in gridlock. We cannot be in edit mode, either the cursor flashing in the footer or the header. Just go ahead and click above it, the footer, or if you're in the header, below it. And then you can go ahead and go back to normal view. Now, of course, in the normal view, it's not going to show you here. Let me scroll up to the top, your headers and footers. You're only going to see that in the page layout view, or let's go File, down to Print. And hey, there we go on the print preview. There's my name. Fabulous. Oh, there's the picture. What a cute kid. And then scroll down to the bottom. We've got the current time, page one of two, and the date. And then, of course, that will also be on page two because headers and footers duplicate on every single page. Fabulous. And there's my name. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please look in the description below this video.